JB, you know, here's a uh, situation. Uh, people love turnaround stories, and uh, here's one, at least with win-loss record, that is clearly a turnaround story. They've really caught national yeah. attention in Schenectady, which is down the street from where I am today, really. And I'm going to let you do the uh, honors here of introducing our next guest who has uh, led the helm here of uh, this turnaround story. Yeah, well, we had him on the show last season when he got his first win as the head coach at Union College. And since uh, the start of this season, had a little uh, slow start, but has rattled off seven consecutive wins and uh, sitting atop uh, by themselves in first place in the Liberty League after knocking off Hobart 28-23 to at homecoming last weekend. Coach Jeff Berman, welcome back to In the Huddle. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you having me. Great to be guys. Well, yeah. Coach, uh, obviously uh, things have been – you know, an interesting progression this season. Some people question the schedule and all that stuff, but you won the games that were on your schedule. And then you go to the delivery league segment of your schedule, and it's Rochester, it's St. Lawrence. Okay, they're having down years, whatever. But you beat Hobart, which I have to say loud and clear for the guy right there because he's not very happy about that fact. Uh, yeah, he was texting me throughout Saturday afternoon, we'll just say. But you beat Hobart, and it, it probably to a lot of people legitimizes – you know, the record, the turnaround, the possibilities here. Uh, you know, how have you walked your team through this season? Is it the one game at a time mentality, one play at a time, one quarter at a time? How have you been, you know, making this happen for this team at this point? Yeah, we definitely take a one game at a time approach. Um, you know, we're very uh, routine oriented, uh, just like most programs are. Our Tuesdays are no different uh, from one week to the other. Uh, the opponent does not matter. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, you know, I think once you start having some success, guys start, um, believing a little bit more. And I think we've, we've, uh, we've certainly are playing with a lot of confidence right now. Um, you know, I think the other thing that, you know, I really never <clears throat> talk about who we play, you know, you try to focus more on yourself, um, and what you can do better, um, to, to improve and to try to get better from week to week. Um, you know, as I told our team after every win, you'll you'll never apologize for winning a college football game. And, and the reason I say that is, is because it's it's difficult. It uh, doesn't matter who you play. Um, I mean, who at this point in this, I thought that Florida State would be two and four and zero and three at home, or zero and three in the ACC. So it's not easy. There's so much has to go into preparation and and, and uh, from a player's perspective, from a coach's perspective. Um, so you know, uh, certainly. Uh, happy with where we're at not satisfied for sure i mean there's a lot of room for improvement uh that's what a bye week's for right now it's a little bit later in the season than you'd like it to be but um you know we're definitely looking to take advantage of it as a miami hurricanes guy let me just say that i'm very happy about that two and four florida state thing but that's a whole nother story sorry jb yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, of, some of my neighbors down here though are definitely not happy about the seminoles but uh sorry. coach back to the dutchman um i'm gonna I, this will be a real big surprise to Frank because I'm going to go into some of the statistics here. Um, and <laughs> hold, the, hold on. I'll be things, right back. <laughs> yeah, right. Some of the things that really stand out to me, Coach, uh, that and, and I'd like to get your perspective on, um, I mean, you guys have 20 sacks in the last eight games. You're, you're like plus 11 or 12, something like that, in turnover margin. I mean, uh, we all knew that that the defense for Union was going to be good. You guys were good last season with uh, guys like Lombardo and others. But what what have you seen this year that has made them just jump up to that next level? Is you saw it against Hobart. I mean, I think you know Sweeney looked frustrated. Um, you know, they couldn't really get the running game going. It just seems like your defense has really uh, stepped it up a notch. Yeah, you know, I credit our defensive staff. Our, our defense coordinator Rick Flanders um, you know I was very fortunate enough to, to bring him here um, with with such a pedigree um, in, in the career that he's had um, and he has he has really got those guys playing at a very very high level um, and then just you know we've had uh, some key performances you mentioned Jake Lombardo um, you know uh, Jack Riley um, off our edge is, is playing really well they're, they're playing really well as a group uh, which is which is critical. We always talk about you know just doing your job, do your one eleventh. Um, if you do your one eleventh, everybody needs to do theirs, and and, and we can we can play a really strong football as a whole. 
Um, but, you know, I think uh, I, I think we're putting them in great positions. And then, you know, it's the player who sets the bottom line. And uh, those guys are, are, are getting after the quarterback right now and, and making plays. I mean, Vincent DeCaterino has had a couple uh, Liberty League uh, honors for this season. And, you know, he's a guy that was playing offense last year that we felt could help us on the defense. And he has just taken off with it. So, uh, you know, very, very uh, uh, happy for him. But, uh, you know, they're just they're playing at a high level. They're believing um, in their abilities right now and in, in, uh, in executing. Coach, uh, obviously the week off uh, coming up here, but this uh, very unusual scattered uh, schedule situation has created an interesting scenario this late in the season for any conference where we have two teams really that are in control of their own destiny. And their names are Union and RPI. Go figure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Ithaca, for as many games as they've got in the books right now, does not control their own destiny because you still face them in two Saturdays from now. And it's going to be a very, very important game at Ithaca. You have an extra week here, obviously, to prep up. They're facing Utica, who's a tough team. I, I'm not going to talk about advantage or disadvantage to that, but obviously you're going to use the extra time to your advantage. What's the buzz going on inside the team? I mean, you can't outright win the conference unless some certain things happen in that game on November 4th, but you could go a long way to setting up a real big Dutchman shoes, Dutchman, Dutchman shoes scenario. Say that five times fast uh, for yourself. Yeah. So what is the buzz and what is the uh, feeling with the team right now? You know, I, I've always kind of taken the approach and I have probably learned it more from just coaches I've coached with. Um, you, you don't make anything seem any bigger than it has to be. And that's why we take a one week head approach like, I didn't talk up against the Hobart. I mean, I knew it was a big game. I already sensed that the kids knew it was a big game. So, you know, I don't think I needed to do much else than that to, to make sure that that, uh, that they knew. I mean, I knew they were going to come out and, and fly around and have a lot of energy. And I, I, they know it's at stake. Um, even without me saying it, that's the buzz I get from it. Um, honestly, we'll only practice twice this week. It's a great week for these guys to – get caught up in their academics, get ahead in their academics. And that's kind of what I talk to them about is, hey, let's use this week. So when we get the game week next week and the week after, you know, uh, your stress level is, is not as high from an academic side of things. Um, you know, the coaches have been out recruiting the last two days. We just came back in today. We had a late practice last night. We'll practice Thursday and have a chance to spend a little bit more time with our family, which, uh, you know, gets lost a little bit in the, during the season. And I'm looking forward to watching my son play as modified football game today so uh All you know right. from that sense you know the the, the coaches that the, the coaches um just continue to prepare these guys um day in day out week in week out and uh again you know i think they they know what's at stake and it's just a matter of approaching the same way trying try to make it too big not not make it too small it's the same so, Coach, you're, you know, when you're when you're running your own program, you're juggling a lot of uh, different priorities, right? Um, and I imagine some of those might include, you know, with this with a bye week, uh, you know, being no game on Saturday for for you guys. I mean, probably some people on the recruiting trail. You already mentioned you you know, did a trip. You're just back. Um, I imagine some coaches are maybe going up to Utica to watch the uh, to watch that game. What are some of the different things you, you're having to juggle, uh, even though you're supposed to be on a you know by taking you know, time off? But you know the job never stops, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it never stops. I mean, I'm still watching a lot of Ithaca film on my iPad, even when I'm on the road recruiting. Um, it's just part of being a coach, I guess. I mean, we won't be at Utica. You know, we won't live scout um, at all. We'll get the film. Uh, late that night, Sunday morning. Uh, we are, you know, with the Liberty League, you're getting every single game already. Uh, so, you know, we have we have all six games they've played so far, or seven games, I guess, uh, that they've played. So, um, you know, we're already studying that. Um, but, again, you know, you really try to focus on <clears throat> where you're at, um, what what your guys are, are doing at a high rate um, and a high execution percentage and, and and try to focus on that and uh, try to refine that a little bit more uh, but you know the, the Saturday off is just the time to you know the kids won't practice Thursday or, or excuse me uh, Friday or Saturday but uh, you know we'll come back out to be a normal game week on Sunday and uh, we'll be ready to go that way but it's just a chance for everybody to kind of take a breath take a step back and kind of kind of just uh, have some time to themselves. 
Union College head coach Jeff Behrman joining us here on In the Huddle. And his uh, team, as you can see on the screen, leads the Liberty League right now at 3-0 over in the uh, conference, 7-1 overall. Coach, you're the first uh, guy from uh, either the Empire 8 or the Liberty League we've gotten a chance to talk to since the announcement a couple weeks ago about Buffalo State coming in officially uh, to the league in, I think, two seasons from now. Uh, that will help the Liberty League retain the Pool A bid, which was obviously a concern. Mm -hmm. But as you read further into the release, they talk about kind of a uh, shared scheduling pact that's going to be occurring beyond just the bowl game that we've heard about between the two conferences. Now, for state schools that don't really have as diverse a geographic alumni base, uh, that might be okay uh, as a thing because New York is kind of their base in many different ways. For private schools like Union, that use scheduling to a certain degree as kind of a way to go and show alumni and even recruits in other states, you know, here we are and come out to see us and support us and everything. That might kind of take away a little bit of that. So kind of give us a plus minus here of Buffalo State coming in, which I think would be the longest conference road trip for Union, if I had to remember, <coughs> even longer than Susquehanna back when. Uh, when this does happen, it will be really a long trip for Union and RPI, especially when it happens. Give us the plus minus take on this. Yeah, I, I, obviously the plus is you keep the AQ, uh, which is critical. I mean, that was a concern of the coaches um, going in. Um, again, you know, I'm going to prepare my team like I prepare them for any other uh, team. So whether they're state school or private school, um, I mean, I guess today that really doesn't concern me as much. Um, I think you, you still got to go out. Uh, prepare, um, execute, and uh, and play the game. Um, in terms of the travel, I mean, we, we had two pretty long trips this week or this year, excuse me, and uh, going up to Bangor to play Husson and going down to Gallaudet to play DC. I thought our kids handled it very, very well. Um, you know, so I think it's just it's just part of uh, it's just part of college football. You know, it's 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 you know the whole conference uh, and scheduling is is. Is difficult. It's, you know, it wasn't as much so, but, you know, when the three teams leave to go to another conference, I mean, it just opens up a lot of holes and you kind of got to do what you got to do um, to get that done. I mean, I, I have experience with that, just having been at Stony Brook and, you know, we, we were making that jump to 1AA football, FCS football, and we played in the Big South. And I want to say in 2012, we, we had six away games. We took six charter flights. Now, you know, at Union College, we're not taking a charter flight to Buffalo, but um, we did have to deal with the travel. Uh, you know, it was it was a lot of travel down to the Carolinas and, and to Virginia. Um, kids are very resilient. You know, they're going to be excited to go play a football game. So, you know, whether you're driving them eight hours to play or, or three hours or five hours, um, you know, I think uh, they'll still be excited to jump off that Thanks, bus and play a football game. Speaking of resilience, we've been featuring them a little bit in other things we've been talking about this week. Gallaudet, which you just brought up uh, as one of the road trips, that has to. I would like to go to one of their games just to witness mm -hmm. how it all works at the end of the day. This is a, a tremendous story. We heard about it when they went to the playoffs a few years ago and everything a little bit, but to be there has to be something special to watch this team, you know, face the odds they face and still perform as well as they do. It was a tremendous week for us. I mean, it was something that I really tried to coach and teach the players about throughout the week, uh, just in terms of, hey, it, you know, they are playing college football just like you do, and they have they have a lot more restraints than you do. And, and you know, just the respect that we felt for them. It was such a great experience for myself and for our program, for our players. I mean, just the amount of respect we had for them was tremendous. I really like what Chuck Goldstein's doing down there. I mean, he and I have traded some text messages after he got his couple wins this year. He texted me after the game Saturday. Um, I just have an, uh, an unbelievable amount of respect for them. I mean, they, they honestly, at some positions, were some of the best players we played this year. Um, it just in terms of their athleticism and their ability to play football, you know, just because they they have an impairment doesn't mean uh, they're not good athletes. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for, uh, for Chuck and his program. And, but like you said, Frank, I mean, just a tremendous experience. Um, it was an honor to go down there and play honestly. And, and just to see how they operate um, was pretty incredible. Indeed. Hey, Coach, uh, we don't want to keep you too long because we know your son's modified game is coming up here. So we don't want to uh, make you late for that. But 
Uh, we want to allow you some shout outs. Uh, we want to give one ourselves. Uh, in the, it's a little apropos, I guess, but uh, it's you know Eric McDowell uh, is a guy that was very special to I know the Division Three programs over at Union, especially the football program. It's got to be a giant loss to not have him there anymore. So we want to give our shout out real quick to him. Uh, hopefully Absolutely. he's doing bigger and brighter things, whatever they may be. But I know he loved uh, Union and uh, Blood Garnet, despite not having gone there, uh, worked there as long as he did. So we want to give our shout out to him. Go ahead with your shout outs, any friends, family, etc. Yeah, you know, just uh, our, the families of uh, of the coaching staff. Obviously, big shout out. I mean, it's not easy, uh, not easy being uh, being a coach's wife for sure. Um, but uh, you know, they've they've been there through thick and thin uh, with us. So. That's one big shout out, and certainly our alums. I'd like to shout out to our alums. Uh, you know, they, uh, you know, it was uh, it was a tough beginning. Uh, you know, there's ups and downs, um, but they are uh, they are uh, strong supporters of us. It was great to see many of them at our game down in D.C. We had a nice uh, nice get together there. Same thing in Boston, and then obviously here at homecoming too. So uh, um, really happy for the for the Dutchman Nation there in terms of uh, their support for us. I know the Hobart Nation down below me here is really thrilled for them too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, it was a long time coming, you know. It was uh, it was time, I guess. But hey, you got to give them credit. They they called a great game, and the the, the kids act really executed the, the game plan really well, and they they deserve the win. So, uh, two more games left, Coach. I mean, I know you're focused on Ithaca. Um, uh, good, you know, good luck with the. Uh, you know, enjoy the your first off. Enjoy your son's game uh, today, and thank you. Enjoy yeah. you know, cracking the tape, and and uh, hopefully you'll know, get some more insight into the Bombers uh, after the Utica game. It's been interesting that Ithaca has been um, kind of hard to peg down in the last couple of weeks, um, as far as you know the kind of team that they have. But I mean, we had Coach Swanstrom on the show earlier in the season. He's obviously uh, done a great job there, and it should be a great matchup between. The teams that know each other for for many many years, uh, a lot of a lot of history between Ithaca and Union. Uh, maybe not the same as a Hobart Union or an RPI shoes kind of situation, but it's still it's a good upstate uh, New York rivalry, and uh, we wish you guys luck uh, the rest of the way. And hey, hopefully we'll we'll be having uh, having you back on soon. Sounds good. I appreciate it uh, again, Frank James, for having me on, and uh, you know appreciate everything that you guys do for the Northeast uh, football and division three football, because uh, it is the truest level of, uh, of college football out there. And uh, you guys uh, just continue to promote it. And I really do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, coach. Yeah. We do appreciate that. Thank you, coach. And James, uh, as folks know, we'll have lightning predictions later in the week. We will not be predicting a union game, obviously, because uh, they have the week off, but uh, I think they've got a good chance against up. the buy, Frank. Uh, yeah, well, you know, those buys can bite you sometimes. you got to be careful with those uh, buy games. No, just kidding. Uh, no, Ithaca Utica might be a game we predict, so come back and check out uh, what nine games we do predict this week, uh, one in every conference in Lightning Predictions. But uh, share this one, folks. Come on. you got to make sure that uh, you know, we get the view counts up there so we give great exposure to guys like Coach Behrman, who uh, has done a great job with him, with his coaching staff and his team this season. As well I will. As I will give. Out. I will rib. Uh, I'm going to rib Coach a little bit because when I, when I interviewed him for the preseason preview back in August, man, he was so so humble, so modest about you know, oh yeah, sort of just taking it. And look at him now, seven and one, three and zero. Oh. I mean, he's sandbagging me, man. He, you know, they got voted <laughs> fifth in the league standings by the coach. Come on, come on, know, man. Yeah, as you always <laughs> say to me. Anyways, yeah, folks. Exactly. We won't hold you up any longer. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you later in the week.